Welcome back to Fridays in Kazakhstan. So we actually had a Friday done before, but it's actually just the last heavy week. Now, we've done Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and a lot of people have been asking, multiple comments asking for Thursdays in Kazakhstan, but would you believe there's not a single day of Thursday available, or at least not in any meaningfully heavy lifts? Can you also move that mouse? Because that uh, media bar is, whoa, whoa. Wow. Wow. So we're sorry. Thursdays must be the day for sauna and massage. We you can see his program online. I'm actually gonna look for it there while we're just watching this, but I'm pretty sure Thursdays only had like one session, which was obviously a rest day for them, you know? Yes. And of course it preempts big massive Friday. Where which you, was probably the biggest of Fridays. Where you do three sessions. Yeah. Three sessions. Three sessions, each one being heavier than the last. Gabriel used to do three sessions on a Friday, I think. He might have done three on Monday and Wednesday. So Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturday were definitely like one session. And then Mondays, Wednesdays and Friday were the big dog days. Big dog. But I think, I think I'll have to go check my notes. But I think Monday and Wednesday in Romania at that time was like two on Monday and Wednesday. But then Friday was, I think Friday might have been three. So one clean and jerk and two snatch sessions, I think. They had a full day off on Sundays as well, wasn't it? Yeah. I yeah. Would, They've earned it, like. A- absolutely, yeah. You know, they've... The crazy thing with Gabriel was how many times he went heavy in, like, the last month. Like, 15 sets of snatches at 170. I won't build for that. Like, just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, he used to do 90% for doubles every week. And he said he... he I think he said that he was doing that for, like, 14 weeks out. Yeah. So, But it was, like, 200 kilos for doubles pretty much every Monday. I think it was, like, a top double... And you can imagine with Gable's lifting, obviously, that he was going to be doing it as precisely as possible. Yeah, and so fast. Like, there's no slow grinders, like. So, you're always bringing up grinder. Like, it's it, this ridiculous. Is, on, th- like. We should point out at this point that this is during his pirate arc. <laughs> this <laughs> is. Yes. Yeah, 180 kilo snatch miss. Booty fulls of stanazolol <laughs> raiding people's islands. Different pirate bandana on the head. The little little belly gusset is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> So we're actually doing, we're preparing a very long video uh, on different country systems. Now, it'll be a very long video. So we're going to keep it exclusively to countries that we've visited or experienced with the coaches. So it'll be like places like Germany, Korea, Japan, Kazakhstan, or there is there extensive knowledge online. We'll do a bit of speculation on some of the other countries, but it's something we did before for years ago on the podcast, but we've some updates to make to it and might as well do it for YouTube. Now, obviously, it's a, it's a big endeavor and obviously a big endeavor for Alex because he's the one that'll have to edit that. Yeah, that's going to be a, a body of work to get through. Uh, he loves he loves it. A large gusset of work to get into. Yes. The, I absolutely love how quickly Ilya goes from clean to front squat. He is, it's, there's no fanning around at the top figuring out if you're going to go for the jerk or if you're actually going to do clean front squat jerks. He just drops straight away. I actually like that way as well. The longer yeah. you wait, the slower the front squat feels, and the slower the front squat feels, the worse the jerk will feel. Mm. So, I've started snatching a lot again recently, which I'm really enjoying, but I'm refraining from doing any cleans or jerks until my elbow is in a sufficient place because it really owied last time. <laughs> and the re- rehab is going really well, so I've gotten an extra about five degrees of extension back, and we're very close to full extension. Not quite there yet, but making good improvements, so... Until it's in a place where external rotation doesn't kill my elbow. But watching some people do some jerks has made me really want to do some jerks. Do some jerks? Yeah. Do you have a number in mind? Actually, you know, what I've been thinking about is I've seen a few people do really nice hand cleans. One or two of the Egyptians. Mm. The really aesthetic hand cleans with like big high vibration or low vibration crossfit bumpers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was really crisp and it made me really want to do some, but... I will refrain, lest I repeat last year's debacle of elbow pain. (laughs) Lest we fall once more. Into the fray. You know what has to be said about Elliot? So he gets, he's always kind of big. And he never really has a massive amount of muscle on, but he maintains mobility phenomenally well. I think that's a genetic thing coupled with training. I've thought about this before. I've thought about this. I also think it's just growing up weightlifting. Yes. He's developed with those positions. Like Mikey Mitsumechi with the weird feet and stuff for jiu-jitsu. But I grew up hypermobile and then weightlifting lost it for me, you know? Yes, weightlifting and eggs. Yeah. <laughs> so Ilya 
Look, he obviously does a load of stretching. We see him do lots of it, like right now on the yeah. screen, which is great. It's like I prepared this earlier. But I think some of that is just pure genetics. I think yeah. he just ended up... Because we see in other lifters when they take stuff and they lose a lot of mobility that they don't retain it. But Ilya, hook grip catching, 240 kilos in the clean. Now, he did use straps and stuff, so I think he had to force it a bit. You know, you can only get so thick... And he gets thick. Well, he is the original fridge. Yeah. You know, what's really sad is that the original person who came up with the fridge will never get any credit. And they might even remember doing it. Yes. They started a meme. You know? Yeah, but there is a there is a person number one. But they like, don't know. There's a person who first called Lily Hill in a fridge. And the thing is, what might happen is that people who thought they came up with it probably just saw it once. Yeah. But they didn't really notice anyone else did it. And they'd be like, I was a person, but they weren't. It's like people copying jokes in stand up and stuff. They mightn't have even realized they've heard that joke before. Mm. But they have. You're you're a big fan of stand up. The seed has been planted. You're a bit of a joke, aren't you? A bit of oh, oh, your yeah. life's a joke. So the the big thing you'll notice about all of these training videos from Ilya is that he just misses wholesale <laughs> non stop snatches all day, every fucking day. But I think their system of training, that Kazakh programming at that point where they're doing multiple waves. Yeah. Like, in this case, is he going, like, it would, be, it would not be uncommon for him to do 145, 155, 160 for three or four waves per training session. That kind of leads to a bit of complacency. And it gives you that latitude to be like, doesn't matter, he missed 160, sure I'm going to build up to it again. The thing is, I suppose, if you have such a high volume of lifts... That as a percentage, he's probably not missing that many lifts compared to someone mm. if you're training four times a week. And Lord knows they miss weights. So they probably like aren't missing that much compared to a whole lot. Like The, the ratio is probably pretty normal, but he just does so many lifts. I feel like Gabriel didn't miss that much, though. No. I think he talked about not wanting to ever miss lifts. I agree with that wholesale. Yeah. What's the bandana thing going on here? Sorry, just before we talk about pirates and weightlifting... The Greeks were actually, like, Prius' old coach wanted them to go for misses. They wanted mm. them to go so heavy, they thought there was some kind of adaption there. I have to say, I really do not agree with that. No. They also weren't a very technically based lifting system. Like, yeah. they were leveraging other things and being very good at weightlifting through that, rather than having an optimized technical model that everybody followed. Greek is one of the countries, actually, Yeah, that we should include. Yeah, I remember Rocco talking about that need. They wanted to see people missing or else they weren't trying hard enough. Yeah, that they, they thought there was some kind of adaption coming from that. Yeah. Which there, I would severely say that there is not. No, definitely not. You are muddying the waters. For skills, high skill sports, like, there's a story, and I think Project told this on an a podcast and maybe it wasn't a podcast we might have told us just in a different conversation but I can actually say because I won't specify who it is but it's a different country it was in Europe and they do track and field and I don't think they do this anymore I don't know if they can do this but this was uh, a while back but one of the methods they took to maximize PED efficiency or leveraging PEDs was that they would train the lifter not the lifters the track and field athletes so hard up until the point of clinical overtraining and I mean like clinical overtraining and overtraining is very much real there's a whole host of clinical symptoms and it is something that is very very interesting but they would push these athletes up until the point of they were essentially clinically overtrained and then only then would they give them PEDs and they would just mm. see magnanimous responses yeah because their body was essentially for want of a better word starving for that it was that androgen receptor density and androgen receptor sensitivity is what they were saying, wasn't it? That they just get so... That's what they're speculating. Yeah. It makes sense if you're going to be using something that's inherently damaging to your health. You should be doing everything possible to make that as effective and the exposure time as short as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, the, just looking at Ilya's lifting here, a very interesting thing is that jump backwards, particularly in the snatch, tends to go away after the start of this cycle. Like, even here, as he gets to heavier Why weights... Why did you use the word cycle there? What was oh that about? God. You just as decide... he gets to heavier weights here, it tends to go away. You'd wonder, is he just horsing into those 160s? Like, it doesn't matter. 
Oh my goodness. Speaking of horses, check out the Seek Strength app for iOS and Android for the Becoming a Horse program, part one and two out. So I, what I love about the progression from this is just, like you're saying there, he literally goes from like, ooh, that technique is like, if you saw a lifter doing that, you went to a seminar and you saw something mm. doing that or you're coaching someone, you'd be like, okay, we have a lot to clean up here. But then we'll see now, we'll lit- we will actually see in about 10 minutes. It'll time. be happening in front of our very eyes. In 10 minutes time, you'll just see his technique going from crispy, like he's at this gym now. In my head, there's like a, a record. There's like correlations of this gym, his technique was this kind of level of goodness. And then when he gets to the the like cream color gym in the yeah. corner with the radiators his technique is crispy crispiness you know he's like crispier than rice krispies but i wonder is that a conscious thing no i'd say it's just he was so out of shape yeah and then he's just railing training you yeah. thought i was gonna say something yeah, else there yeah there it is but then he just comes back into shape and it progresses like i can feel now as i'm training my technique is getting better as the weights are getting heavier you know that 165 is pretty crispy cream yeah, as a 70, not bad. Not bad. It's not as crisp as it's going to be, though. This is so exciting because you know something great is about to happen. I was just thinking about this the other day. So, ever likes to say the journey is the most enjoyable thing in life and all that, right? But I actually disagree with that when it comes to sports performance. The journey is the most enjoyable if you are actually heading towards your goal, no matter how slowly. Because we've all had a training block where mm. you've been training and you've got nothing for it and the training isn't enjoyable and most importantly, in retrospect, the training does not seem enjoyable. You do not enjoy remembering that training block. Whereas if the outcome had been different, yeah. I guarantee you, you'd be like, oh, that, that training block has, was actually really fun. You, the struggle in retrospect is great, you know. See, there's a quote on that, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful or something like that. But it's only, you can fool yourself. And you know if you're going the right direction, you know... Yeah. It might be hard, but you'll still enjoy because you know you're going the right direction. But you know when you're not going the right direction. And actually, this most shocking of all is when you think you're going the right direction and then it doesn't happen. And you're like, oh man, what? It's, it's actually funny. It's like when you think you feel you're getting sick and you lie to yourself for a few days. You're like, no, no, I'm just tired. Like, this isn't, or like, that cut's not infected. Mm-hmm. And then on the third day, you wake up and you're definitely sick. Here's 220 kilos. What a way to load 220. Oh, he's clean and jerk. is so good. Oh. That's one thing he's clean and jerk really comes back is, is uh, 227 here. He has the best timing on a clean to have ever existed in weightlifting. Certainly one of the best for sure. Oh. Stop making those noises. <laughs> 227. So I don't know actually what month this is, but... He's obviously far ahead in his progression on his cleaning jerks as well. He's some man for the sneaky under the t-shirt belt. The cheater belt. He is the OG cheater belter. 200 kilo trick press. They cared surprisingly little about squats. Yeah. So from looking at his training, from talking to some of the Kazakh lifters, from looking at the programs published, and there was a, a paper, and we covered that before, in one of the, the this actual training plan that they developed... They published it in some journal. The So the front squat was for sport specificity. They had these... They had these speculations about their loading and I was the most productive for explosive power. And if you look at like cluster set research, you're like, okay, they might be onto something in terms of the waves and they're kind of speculating with... It's almost like, there's 265, but mm. it's almost like some kind of uh, PAP or post-activation potentiation going up and down and stuff. But like realistically, like they, they weren't really on to anything so much, you know. Um, there were speculations of it, but really it was just lots of weightlifting <laughs> was the kind of the end result, you know. Yeah, a lot of practice, a lot of valuable weights. I think as well for the, the cluster set thing, and there's multiple examples of this, like PAP is very much the same thing logistically it just doesn't work in a lot of sessions PAP or clusters both yeah you know like if you have an athlete and maybe you're doing SNC with that athlete or even if you're a weightlifter you probably have an hour and a half maximum two hours maybe to get valuable work done and then suddenly you're doing rack pulls that are, that's a cluster set with 30 seconds rest in between each rack pull like the difference you're going to get in outcomes there I actually don't think is worth it in terms of just What's going to be better, getting more work done over the course of a session and thus over the course of the training block and then accruing more valuable volume or getting a tiny difference in the efficiency with which you gain power 
I really think the the cluster set in the current way people train the cluster set isn't useful. I think in season cluster sets make good sense. When it comes yeah, to when you're trying to get as little training in as possible. But if you're trying to maximize power output, yeah. I think it's probably quite interesting. But in season training is such a different beast for athletes. Like it's oh, yeah. it's minimizing, not maximizing performance. It's like minimizing loss of performance. Absolutely. You're just holding on to things. Yeah, a lot of stretchy poodles here. Do you know what's funny? And you always see this in training halls. You'll have brand new platforms, yeah. brand new bears and plates, mm-hmm. everything perfect. And then you'll have a set of jerk blocks or a set of blocks in the background like that that look like they've been drawn in from a tractor garage somewhere. But nobody nobody makes jerk blocks or blocks really, you know. <laughs> I know. Thing. Whereas Aliko are like, yeah, of course, here's 10 platforms. Mm. Like, where are they right now? Like, what is this building? It looks like a narrow corridor, like a narrow hallway. Like Some of these videos are from the President's Club or the Astana Club. The Expo 2017, I remember watching this. This was like in 2014. We're like, 2017? That's ages away. That Expo was so far. Now it's 2024. That's mad, yeah. Seven years later. So we've got some no strap snatches, which is something he did every week. And quite a notable difference in his heavy no strap snatches with his snatches with straps. He was, uh, you can see that loop away off the floor really punished him, you know. Mm. I think as well... At the top, he really got punished. Isn't it interesting, you know, if you say a bad thing about someone's favourite lifter, like, no yeah. matter what it is, even if it's objectively true, people, some people, a very small percentage of people, most people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, or whatever. But you say it about someone lifter, can't believe you're criticising yeah. the best lifter ever. We're literally making this video saying that Illy Illin is probably one of the best people who have ever touched a barrel in his entire life. Actually, I read it, like, I was like, oh, my God, you can't make fun of That's how I read it when people make those comments. <laughs> Uh, the other thing, if you make a comment about the equipment someone is using, mm-hmm. if somebody is a fan of that equipment, I'm going to say something that's going to annoy people. Most people who aren't professional weightlifters shouldn't stra- snatch with straps. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you there's someone watching the video right now who's annoyed by that. Oh, well, look, you know, you can't make, you can't please everyone. <laughs> but like, we made the video about Lee Sang and the split jerk, you know, and mm. this guy was snatching like 80 kilos and he was like, are you the best weightlifter ever? Who do you think you are? You can't question him. And it was like, first of all, Lee Sang isn't the best weightlifter ever. Mm. We met him and his coaches and we were actually talking to his coach about, about, Lee, that. about Lee Sang. But objectively, that technique is an issue, you know, and so he misses jerks and stuff. But it shouldn't be, like it shouldn't be how you feel about things. Is like, is objectively what we're talking about? Does it have sense? But, but if you lack the understanding of a subject, you can miss the forest for the trees. Yeah, absolutely. Gave up on those straps real fast, didn't he? I will say he did the classic thing of the obvious look at the thumb after he missed the snatch, you know. Oh, my just tongue. A, oh. Just waiting for the coach to be like, okay, just get the straps. You know, that was a big thing as well, was not only was there a lot of misses, there was loads of clerks in the snatch. Mm, yeah. Loads of clerks. Yeah. Like, Actually, weekly. Yeah. We look at these being like, oh, he missed a lot of lifts. He clerked a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. So that's really, that is a very noteworthy point about this was the fact that he's clerking snatches. Never clerked clean jerks. No. I don't think we've seen him miss any clean ever. Maybe a few jerks, but never clerking a clean and jerk. But snatches, loads of clerks and snatches, and you'll see him just like attempt it. What a mindset. What a winner. Jeez, he just teleports under that bar, doesn't he? He really did teleport under My that. My God. That 195 barbell is very heavy though, look, you know? Yes. Looney yellow. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, what I would really love if, if someone had been like, Ilya, don't have the camera with the automatic focus turned on. That's what I wish. You know, there's a lot of refocusing going on here. What I wish is that he also did this for 2015 present cups where he clean jerk 246 oh, at 105. Stop it. He's rack, like, he's the barbell is touching both shoulders and his clavicles and whatever. But his elbows are low in the bottom of that, you know. Mm. It's, a, it's a testament to his capacity to hold it. It's a testament to his fridge-like torso. Look, I, I'm not, you know, we shouldn't really comment on athletes' bodies or whatever, but he has a little bit of a belly. Like, it's, the little belly is noticeable here. Because if you look at him in 2012... Oh, oh and he's yeah. a weightlifting powerhouse. No, but look at 2012, Ilya. You can see his abs through his yeah, singlet. Yeah, 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 No, I'm not. Oh. Skippity-doo. What have we got here? 210, fast mat. That's a nice 210. No That's one loads lovely. 210 like that. No. Jeez, when you think about it, there's not many people in the world alive who can clean jerk 220 right now. 
like today. No, right today? No. Today. It doesn't last an ever if you think about it. Yeah. There's probably <laughs> this is, 40 yeah. supers alive. Maybe, maybe not even 40. I don't know, is it 40? Probably 30 supers alive. There's surely yeah. 30 supers alive. There's like, between the 102s and 109s, there's probably like 10 who can clean track 220. Probably like that, really. If you think of the 102s, anyone's... Oh, seen? I think 220, it's definitely 10 or less. If you include one, between the 102 and the 109 class. Yeah. There's probably less than, uh, you know, 96s. I don't think any 96 can clean track 220 right now. And the 89s, there's like three, maybe four. Tian, Lee, Nino, Carlos, Kedemar can't, Jason Lopez. Jason Lopez can't. Not that no, many people. No, it's a very exclusive club. It's super exclusive. It's crazy to think you could have got, <laughs> you could have gone to a seminar in the US and seen him. And what's the Russian lifter? Vasily. Vasily and Klakov lifting all on the same day. In some CrossFit box with 20 other people. I watched every video of those. Right? Yeah. And first of all, I just want to say, at the time, they were amazing. They're Sorry. still amazing. So I just also point out, see how much better his technique got yeah. already. It's yeah. a week later. Yeah. But I watched every one of those videos, and I trolled them for any clip of Ilya Alien lifting and training. Because at the time, we had zero lifts of Ilya <laughs> outside of competition. And I trolled it for anything. And there was just a few pathetic 80, 90 kilo snatches. He used to never go heavy at those. There's one video of the Kings of Prussia seminar, and he snatches 50 and 80 kilos, I'd say, 100 times. But he was so smart with his training blocks. Like, he was like, training block starts now, and he knew the process inside out. Yes. Now, I noticed people like, oh, because he knew the drugs well, but that was his process. Like, that was That's part, part of, of it, yeah. You know, and he he just knew what he needed to do to get where he got. Oh, yes. And it was Yasha Khan had a blog, and it was like, Yasha lifts... And you remember I was talking to them and they went to, I think it was one of the, maybe it was a Waxman's gym or something. And they were talking and he block snatched like 141. Hmm. And it was like at the start of that year or something. And they were like, yeah, he's like, by the end of the year, I'm going to win the Worlds. And Yash was like, there's no way you're going to get back into shape. and Straight back into shape. Here's 180. Oh, yeah. That 180 looks so good. I wonder what the story of that tattoo is. Maybe there isn't a story. Here's the the liar fives. These are actually five kilo plates. No way. Here's a Clark. Yeah, so it's 160. You know, what I really oh. want is a Russian mini 10 bumpers, the medium mm. ones, the like the, yeah. the Labradoodles. <laughs> Some 65. See that'll fool you. Yeah, it would actually fool you. You think that's 60? Yeah. But it's on 65. Jeez, that's a sneaky one. Oh, that's a sneaky snatch. Oh, yeah. Gurf, do you know who the person is holding the belt in the center yeah. poster? That's uh, Antali Krapati. He's there on the far right and the left. Okay. He's uh, he's in all three of those photos, actually. He died in a motorcycle accident in his 40s. Okay. Yeah, a very good racer. One of the best ever. Another clerk? Yeah, another clerk. Don't give a fuck. Straight back in Anatoly, as well. Anatoly Krapati, I think. Or Anatoly, yeah. Yeah, and makes it. Yeah. Press up, but whatever. Uh, Ilya was some man for the intra-workouts and pre-workouts. I'd say he was. But you always see it. Yeah, he's dead right. He's training three times a day there. Yeah. No, he's dead right. Apparently, they were saying in one of the interviews that... The coach was like, Ilya has a really big sweet tooth and we'd find rappers around the place and he'd be like, Ilya, have you been eating <laughs> sweets again? Ah, uh, there's a clerk? so funny. I don't think these clerks are like mental. I think they're like, I'm really tired. Yes. They could also be mental though. We don't know. Because he's tired. Because he's tired. You know how it goes. You're on to your 18th training session of the week. <laughs> yes. They brought the wife in for a big session. Now ex-wife. Is that 170? Yeah, 190. There's one of these where he like power cleans at 190 and it's like, it's almost like power cleans it by accident. Yes. I wonder, is it in these one of these Fridays? I remember training in the gym in Cork here in Flyfit. <laughs> and you accidentally power cleaned 190. And Clarence accidentally power cleaned 190. Remember that? I don't think it was 190. I think it was a little bit less, is it? I think it was 190. I think he was just throwing plates on the bar and he, he said was, he wasn't sure. Yeah. He was basically just kept adding plates to the bar. It was the first week or two that the gym had reopened. Mm -hmm. And power cleaned something outrageous. 225. Oh, my God. That jerk with the timing of the dip 
on that jerk, it almost gets better as it gets a little heavier. Mm-hmm. It certainly gets really specific. Mm. Here's to 35. Big dog's got to eat. First hard clean we've seen all video. Oh, oh. first miss clean and jerk. I'd say he must have missed 20 snatches to one clean and jerks in the whole training block, if not more. That's crazy. 235 again. Got his CrossFit t-shirt on. In some of the other Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays in Kazakhstan videos, we mm-hmm. saw a lot of board shorts. CrossFit board shorts. No, that's... no. We that's, saw a lot of them. I know no, you don't want that to admit was wrong. that they No. Sh- shut up a second. <laughs> it happened. So that was when the start of the training block and it wasn't that serious. Okay. And then when we saw them on the comeback... We knew it was all over. It I was knew, all over. When I saw the board charts on the comeback, I knew it was all over. No, you have to have tight tracksuit pants, preferably Nike, with a small amount of luminous fabric somewhere on them. I do hope someday I own an elite performance gym and I'm wearing my white loafers and white polo shirt on my, with my chinos, you know? Cream chinos, yeah. How I think is, they'd really suit you. How is drug protocol going, guys? Come on. <laughs> And it's just Weightlifting Ireland is just doing really well. My private team is doing great. You know, you've you've gone somewhere. We don't know where you've gone. You've a glass cabinet full of A and B samples on the wall ready to pull out <laughs> at any time. So here we've got two sixty five. Fast math is that two sixty five, two forty five? Yeah, two sixty five. Oh yeah, yeah. Dance for oh, Azilia. Yeah, yeah. two seventy. Let's go, big boy. Here we go. He's dancing beforehand. Still dancing. That looked like a kind of positive nod, but he's, in fact, he's just dancing. Oh, my God. You know what's interesting is Ilya used to squat really high in the front squats, mm-hmm. but then he actually squatted later, lower again as his career got later. That's the the homepage video on your original YouTube page. Sir Owen Murphy. Has uh, the comments turned off and you say, I, I'll turn the comments back on when you can act like adults. <laughs> oh, there was just, it, it was like the first time you'd see like arguing on the internet about lifting like nearly. Oh my God. So I was like, I am not looking at these comments. So he didn't need sponsorships. He, like he'd state sponsored funding. He said how much support he got from the Presidente, El Presidente of Kazakhstan. But what about the Life's Good I, LG sponsorship? Uh, he always had that, but he had that for years, but it looks of things. And then he tragically lost that in a skating public, public debacle, the downfall. That's a dis- it was a disgrace. Life's good, lifts good, lift good, life's lift, good. LG I'd, TV, I'd say LG lift good really is. He real. used to love being on his phone for those, like even in the training hall, like this. I hope he got a lot of money for that. I hope so. One seventy. Are we saying Clark or no Clark? I'm saying Clark. I'm gonna say Missy, me, Missy, just like a miss. Oh. oh, see, like he didn't ever wear those long white socks on the comeback, you know. And it's mm. telling. Look, oh my God. on that comeback as well. Surely he could have found someone who would be like, "Yeah, we can avoid drug tests." I can think of three people off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I literally know three people who could help him. Um, one ninety here, clean and jerks. I think he might have been a bit delusional about what he could do. Yeah. It's unfortunate as well when most of your career has been founded on just a certain way of training. Deluded is the wrong word. Misguided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deluded is, is a hard But also, word. he's the greatest weightlifter. He's the GOAT! He's the GOAT. Yeah, he's the GOAT. If anybody deserves to have notions of... Grandeur. I can do this. Yeah. It's him. Mm-hmm. Well, the training style he took upon himself in the comeback wasn't... Uh, no. Wasn't the best. You can't blame him for that, though. No, you cannot blame him for that. Here's 220. What a way to low 220. Pull under. The plunder, as you, as you said in a recent video. The plunder. The plunder. plunder. He's big on his shoulder now, oh, indeed. He's yeah. broad. A sexy boy. He looks like he should be working at security of like a, an Italian restaurant in Moscow. That's my favorite compliment I've gotten from Jan Hack of Korea. Sexy boy. Yeah, he rubbed my tummy and said, sexy boy. <laughs> I am a sexy boy to be fair you know so I mean it's valid like it's a legit compliment it is you it, deserve it you worked hard for that Jan Hack started rapping as well which was yeah that was very funny that was and he was really into the rapping oh yeah it was so good he was rapping in English no he was rap. he was so good I was yeah. like I know you hate rap but I was really I was jiving I'm not a fan of rhythmic American poetry I was absolutely vibing with him <laughs> 2.30 then he made fun of one of the other members of the national team for being too fat. I won't yes. say who, but uh, it was very funny. They didn't care, obviously. It was just a bit of team banter. Imagine if you're training in that training hall. Go on. And they're like, 
Don't dare, I've thought about it. Mr. Illin, <laughs> Mr. Illin is squatting, go squat with him. And you're like, oh no. And he's just vibing and dancing to discotheque music. And you're like, oh, I haven't even warmed up. And he's like, 2.30 on the bar. <laughs> um, and then he destroys it. Lads, am I right in saying... No, I won't. Uh, yeah, no. I actually won't say that because no, I'll put a down around the whole video. Yeah. Um... So that's Vladimir set off. He an incredible snatcher. This lifter's name I can't remember. Is it Almash Ushtev? He was like 180, 220 as a 94, maybe a little bit more in training. And they, uh, he's a, was a bit older nearly, but they were around for a long time. They joined PPSC Team Astana. Oh, yeah. Woo! What I really wanted as well is what the dynamic was like in that camp. Because is the superstar. They had a falling out after Vladimir and Neil. Yeah. Okay. That kind of answers my question. I don't know if... Is there any animosity there? Well, this was... This was like Ilya's team, you know? This wasn't like the national team. Oh. But they all did very well, you know? Yeah. There's some nice front squats. 240. No sleeves or belt or anything? No. The thing you don't get as well is how much wrappage there is in those knee wraps. I was talking to Nat Arm before about that, and he said he had a feel of them one day when Ilya was sitting down. He said they're, there's nothing on them. Yeah. Does the, yeah. They're literally just the... We got those bandages in Kazakhstan. Yeah. They're literally ace bandage. Pretty much, yeah. You, I think a lot of people look at them and are like, oh, that's the same amount of wrappage as is in like those bumblebee knee wraps that you see powerlifters wearing. But you know what I love about weightlifting? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares because yeah. you still do the lift. You've still done the lift. Yeah. That's what I really love. There's no like, oh, uh, a lot of arch in that bench or he's hips lifted. In made of things like that barbell went overhead. Mm -hmm. When the wide grip or in the close grip, it went overhead. I actually feel like we're losing that a small bit girth with the soft elbows thing and the recent no, judging. No, no, no. That's just idiots. But <laughs> people who do weightlifting don't give a Nobody fuck. cares, yeah. Nobody gives but a shit. I, I actually think they really need to fix that. They are. It's going away now after this Olympics, but I think okay. they're doubling down on their as well as weightlifting. Like, <laughs> no, it's still in. It's been confirmed for Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. We Wales. really, we really need to talk to the Americans and try and get back into America for the next Olympics. They were banned from America. It's not a big deal. No, Los Angeles is too far away. Twenty twenty eight. The West Coast. West Side. West Side. Go on. There we go. One sixty five for the big dog. That's it. Take your shirt off. 160. The size was back. <sighs> he's getting a bit leaner, isn't he? Yeah. He's definitely in better shape. Oh, he's in way better shape. He's got more muscles. Yeah. A little eating all that sweetie poos. It's so funny to hear he had a sweet tooth. He's got a little pecs in him, isn't he? It's a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit. What have we got here? 160, 170. I'm not sure about you, but the walls in my school were that exact colour. Yeah, that does ring a bell. And we had the same radiators as well. Is it radioactive paint, though, was the question? Lead lead paint, yeah. Lead-based paint. Yeah. 175 for the no-strappy poodles. Mm. Oh. In a shock to everyone, did not see that coming. That's not a Clark. That's just a miss. I wonder what the intro workout was. No jokes about drugs here, no. On, on a serious note, was he using... Essential amino acids, was there creatine, was there glucose, was there pre-workout? I'd, the I'd say everything there and a bit more. Little snazzle, little pirate booty. Little Glenn. Sailing the seven oh. seas for this treasured stash, the snazzle. I wonder, we don't see the pirate bandana in this gym at all. I wonder, is there a rule? No, there is. This is serious training time. It's yeah. not time for pirates. Pirate bandana is not for this training hall. Oh, 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 yeah, 160. That's so nice. Oh, sorry, 150. Here's 160. Boom. Yes. See, it's just technique that's so much better. Yeah. His back position is incredible as well. It's funny as well because a lot of people will think about ramping up with PD use and, oh, your technique doesn't matter. But his technique gets so much better and the lifts get so much heavier. Technique is the most important thing in weightlifting. No one. If you want to maximize your ultimate gains as a weightlifter, if you want to lift the most you could ever possibly lift, PEDs or no PEDs, technique 
is the most important thing. I'm more sure than ever. Perfect technique is the best for best training. It's the most repeatable. It's the most powerful. It's the most precise. It is how you will lift the most. And there is, there is just, I'm so convinced of it now, you know, more than ever, that having better technique just makes everything better in your weightlifting. No ifs, ands, or buts. 175. Oh. You know, there's kind of a confusion around a tactical model that, like, countries have different tactical models, but there's only one set of principles, realistically, that people obey, you know, and it's conversion yeah. of two barbell and your center of mass in a, an efficient manner. Everything else is just aesthetics in some ways. Like, the best lifters follow the same principles, but they just have different body shapes and positions slightly, but they follow the same principle. My God, that was... 180? Yeah. Good Lord. Here we go, 185. Someone, I saw a comment, someone saying that Lasha has confirmed that this is his last Olympics. Really? Yeah. I don't blame him, to be honest, Gareth. I'm sure I've been saying it since last year, that yeah. I think he should retire. Like, it's, it's, you've done enough. Yeah. He's earned it. Yeah. If anyone's earned a retirement, it might have seen just to get out of life. Yeah. Like, no bands, no injuries. He did have one band, didn't he? Shh, 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 shh. Uh, no failed performances, no bronze at the Olympics yeah. when it could have been gold. Just, like, take your final goal and just, yeah. you know, go in peace. I really hope he does. Oh! Jeez, oh. the black Nike Rom 2s really are something special. Yeah. I need to get a pair of them before they're out of, where they're gone forever. I just have a pair of the black Nikes. I know where you can get a pair. Do you? Mm -hmm. What size? 10. Oh, it's a bit too big. As I've gotten older, my feet have gotten <laughs> half a size smaller and half a size wider. It happens. It actually does. And people are like, oh, no, it's the manufacturers. No, everyone's, no, all, no. all the manufacturers. Also, you have those same shoes that you wore when you were yeah. 20. Like. Yeah, 220. Oh, yeah. If anyone wants to sell me 9.5 UK or like 44 in the right black round twos, I'll uh, let me know. Or if you want to give them to me, it's fine as well. I mean, that's not a big deal either. <laughs> <laughs> send you a pair of old socks as payment. Like, it's all a company expense anyway. <laughs> when is that little boy weightlifting? I hope so. He's probably like 20 years old now. Yeah. He could be in his prime of his life. He could be in that gym on that platform doing crazy weights. And we'd never know. We'd never know. 230 for Come the on. big dog. I'm pretty sure he makes more than this. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. That overhead position just is crisp. He worked hard in that, though. Yeah. So he injured his elbow in the snatches of the 2008 Beijing Olympics from having too much flexion, he said. Too much like, wrist cocked back too far. And mm -hmm. he said he didn't secure the position enough, so he worked hard in that after. He said it was very important. He's just in better shape now. He's yeah. just a bit more... He looks like an athlete. Well, he <laughs> is one of the best ever athletes. Yeah. Let's go. Come on, big dog. I feel like this could be the start of like one of those motivational videos. Rap playing in the background. There's like Eric Thomas or something giving a speech over the top of it. And Ilya just talking to the chalk bucket. He's so sweaty, yes, but so much chalk on. Let's go, Ilya. 237. A lift I've watched <laughs> several hundred times. 237 and a half. Oh. He's just so patient and then to get under it, it's just crazy. Oh yeah. There'll never be another, I don't no. think. I actually don't think we'll see another. I don't think so. He was such a just a lining of the spheres. Yeah. Just the right country. Grew up in a gym. In the right age, with yeah. the right coaches, the right talent. His coach said when he was a teenager, he said coach was an older man. When he walked in at eight years old, he came in his brother and his coach said, I've been waiting my whole life for an athlete like you when he was a oh child. Oh my God. Yeah. But when you're coaching, yeah. you are waiting for athletes like that. Yeah. Every so often someone just pops up and you're like, oh, finally. Yes. This is the person. But you know what though? I kind of care less about that now. Oh yeah. As yeah. we go on. Because we've had some good athletes in different sports and you're like, oh yeah, the mostly it was for the 
to validate the methods and you're like, oh, it works the same. Mm. Now I'm as happy just helping the all like just normal athletes or people who are non professionals, but the the non freak athletes who are trying to do sports, you know, the whatever the average professional athlete means or whatever the semi professional athlete means or, you know, like a twenty two year old who's just trying to be maybe go pro in throwing or eight hundred meters or Yeah, or make their living off sport for a while. Yeah, or go like amateur not amateur, like paid amateur ranks in mixed martial arts or something or yeah. win IBGF Worlds or something. You know, it's there is satisfying to help. Yeah. There's so much going on when you've like that high level athlete. You know when someone's like trying to make professional rugby or something or Oh yeah. Or someone's trying to get into another Olympics or something. But the stakes are just so high. It yeah. does it really does influence your uh not your perception of them as an athlete, but your perception of every decision you make. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think you ne- that it necessarily impacts you in a positive way either. I don't think you necessarily suddenly start making better decisions. Like the decisions are the same, mm-hmm. uh, but because of that perceived pressure, you do make... It's kind of stressful. Yeah. But isn't it doing more good to help more athletes? Definitely. Than it is to like... Rise all boats. Yeah. Yeah. Than just uh, the one or two super pros. Sorry now to interrupt. Is he wearing a belt under the singlet in a super sneaky belt there? Or is he just doing these belts list? No, he's definitely wearing a belt. Yeah. I th- I'm not sure, actually. So these are the waves here in the front squats. And their idea here was that they were keeping them fresh or keeping them fast. And one of the other things as well they thought was that shorter training sessions... So they'd have a training session, you'd rest 15, 20 minutes training session. And their idea behind this was that you were keeping it primarily fast twitch fibers. So they were kind of looking at it from a metabolic side of things. So they were like, okay, we're going to stay fresh. And this is the idea we, we've talked about a few times, you know, and it's it's kind of very clear, but in other ways, it's not very, very clear. So if you look at some of the training where if you're looking at people who need mostly fast twitch fibers, so type 2A fibers, strength training usually seems sort of wrong kind of strength training can take you from type 2x to type 2a and type 2x are sometimes actually higher in sedentary populations and they seem to go away with some training and some people speculate that type 2x might not be active but most people would agree that they're perfectly serviceable muscle fibers you know and so that the type of training and how long you're training that's why you're always saying not to train slow if you're trying to be someone who's fast because you could be encouraging, and it seems like that you're encouraging a change in muscle fibers, maybe from type 2X, type 2A, or, or maybe if you're training very poorly from uh, fast switch to slow switch fibers. And their idea from these shorter breaks was come in fresh, you're doing really fast lifts, you're doing your waves, then you're resting for 15, 20, 30 minutes, you're getting your energy back, then you're training again. And their idea was that you're always staying fresh, you're always staying really active, and you're doing sharp movements, so you're reinforcing the idea that you need to be fast because. To be fast, you have to do things fast. You don't really get faster by overcoming fatigue or there's no real compensation mechanism where, you know, if you squat lots of volume, the heavier weights will actually get a bit better, you know. But when it comes to speed and stuff, the idea is that if you're training slow, you're staying slow, basically. Mm. That's why we always say that, like with throwers and power athletes, to move the heavyweight fast. And so their idea here, and look at seems to be doing all right was that really precise training session no real wasted variations coming in they're doing their session they're doing their snatches and they're resting for half an hour eating some sweeties yeah taking your intro workout and coming back again it's funny the the bulgarians had a very similar rest period yeah uh that kind of 15 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes for some of the heavier sessions but uh it was quoted as like when they asked Avajev why Oof. that was the amount of time. And it was like, that was usually the time for two cigarettes and a bottle of beer. <laughs> so here's 190. So it's actually heavy oh, snatch yes. we're seeing. And the, so the ironic thing about the cigarettes was they were actually getting some PED use yeah. from nicotine. And the beer is just make it more, more enjoyable. Oh, oh. it sounded like they spent more time trying to avoid training. Yes. There was much energy into avoiding training. Like, there was so much wasted time in that training system. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like the Kazakh system was, was still pretty brutal. 
but a bit more accommodating, I think. I think it's a bit modernized as well. A bit. Like it's a, a good few years on, you know. Here's 190 again. Can't remember if he makes 190. Oh, he's so oh, angry. No. Okay, we're back again. Oh, no, this is clean. No, pulls. I wonder what he's saying to the camera. I'd love to know. I'm class. This is just really good. I'll get this next week. Stop shaking the camera. This is going to be class. <laughs> I'm going to snatch this again later tonight. Yeah, I'm going to maybe snatch this on my third pull. So you like that heavy pulls as well? His yeah. pulls are so nice. Yeah. And he went pretty heavy with them relative to his snatch at least. Like 110, 20%. I actually think some of his pulls are nicer in the first and second pull than the snatches are. And some of the snatches, he can bump the bear forward a lot mm -hmm. when he's kind of tearing it off the floor, you know. That never, ever happened on his pulls. We still haven't seen his heaviest snatch from the floor of all time, just in case anyone remembers. So I think we, did he say he did 202 from the floor? And uh, no one's been able to get it as of yet, or he hasn't uploaded it. So I think we all want to see that. We all want to see it. I was listening to a podcast the other day and some millionaire had bought basically the last album that is his favorite band had ever made and he paid like a few million dollars for it or whatever and then the band never released it mm -hmm. i feel like there's somebody out there with a few million dollars who'd spend it to see that heaviest snatch from Ilya. but Ilya just uploaded instagram for insta close <laughs> let the boy watch so we've got like 210 kilo pulls mm, is it 210 170 180 no 200 kilo pulls yeah 200 kilos he must have no grot to go heavier on pulls here either, surely. No. Surely he's so tired. It's funny. I can feel how tired he is. Yeah. It, one thing that makes me appreciate how tired he must be is when you see nice early morning sunshine in the window and then darkness outside in the window. That looks like winter darkness. Too. Yeah. That looks like... That's not pleasant darkness. There's gradually more things on those red seats behind the training platform. And less people you'll notice. Yeah. There also seems to be more seats than there was a while ago. <laughs> I don't think those all those seats were there a few weeks ago. 200 again. Ah, oh, they're so nice. Positionally, they're perfect. Seat nice and bright outside, mm -hmm. jogging up to the bar. Surely his body's just tired at night time, when it's dark time. You used to do pulls with every session, or was it just in the last session? Um, I don't remember, but there was, there was a few sessions where he did pulls. Yes. No clean pulls by the looks of things in the, the latter training programme. He did him a bit at the start, if I remember, but there wasn't any snatch pulls or any clean pulls as the programme went on when he got into the intensification phase. The realisation, the intensification. Yeah. So we were back with some snatching again. This is like peak tactical snatching. Yeah. Now, his technique was a little bit better when he was a 94, as always is the case, just... More range of motion in his muscles, more power to weight ratio, or better power to weight ratio. Less mechanical stacking. Yeah. Good speed. Oh, so nice. One seventy five. So at this point, Garth, when they're training and he has kind of his own team, he's reached out to the president or written a letter to the president being like, I want to do my own thing. Yeah. How did it do you know how they were interacting with Team Kazakhstan? Like, do they have any coaches or physios or anything present or is he literally just out there on his own no no so there was a few of them there and they, they had two coaches uh, and one of the coaches is coach in Uzbekistan or, or was up until recently is it okay. Beck, I think maybe so I don't really know what happened after the fallout obviously team Ilya was gone once the 2016 ramifications came about 185 there but 188 here I don't know. So obviously the team disbanded when most of the team tested positive and along with everybody else in weightlifting at the time. Yeah, yeah. Like what, 70 other people or 50 other people or something from retest. So that obviously put pay to that and I don't know. I, he obviously wasn't put in jail so I don't think he really cared. And Yeah. I remember he was on about getting a, a really popular or some famous sports solicitor or, or lawyer and taking them to a cast, you know, court of arbitration for sport mm -hmm. in Switzerland, but obviously didn't get it, didn't get out. I think there might have been a bit too much going on there. Yeah, there's some stuff going on that is probably, something obviously happened behind the scenes. I think because of the other players involved, there was probably just a, 
No, 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 it's okay. We've heard stories of countries paying for other athletes to be popped mm-hmm. from athletes themselves. Oh my God, what weight is that? 191, no, 188, because that's 188 and they're 0.5, so 189. Do you believe those stories? Yes. Yeah. Well, sorry, I believe the story that we were told by the athlete who told us that. Yeah, I be- yeah I'm very inclined to believe them. It's unfortunate as well because there's always an element of kind of personal experience that will cloud those, you know. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. I also don't believe that the athlete on the other side who might have meddled when... Oh. I don't believe, like, the athlete who meddled because athlete... So athlete B meddles because athlete A gets popped. I don't think athlete B has anything to do with that. And yet the animosity is felt towards that athlete. But there was the public story, I remember Zach was talking about this years ago, was that in 2000 Olympics, Dimas was basically set up to win gold and the Iranian lifter, whose name eludes me if anyone can think of it in the comments, was told that he he was going to test positive, I think, if Mm -hmm. he didn't miss some lifts, even though he's in very good shape. Mm. So, now again... I'm not saying I don't believe him, but at the same time, you do have to have a little bit of a sceptical hat on. Yeah. You know. <laughs> the sceptical sausage dog look. Like, you know, it is important just to be like, okay, that's an interesting story. I'm not saying I don't believe you, but at the same time, I'm like, right. 191. I could easily believe it happening. Could easily see it happening, you know. Yeah. Oh, and it's it would be nowhere near the most controversial thing to happen in an Olympic sport. No, in fact, it would be yeah, <laughs> the run of the mill. No, in fact, it's it, like it's something that you could totally see happening. Yeah, but at the same time, if you can't, they don't have any corroborating, corroborating, corroborating. Oh my god, corroborating, 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 corroborating evidence. You're like, okay, it's an interesting story, and look, we hear stories all the time, but you're always like, yeah, some are much more believable than others. See, it's hard when there's personal bias too, you know, and you're like, oh, I would have won gold if it wasn't for them paying off, you know? Absolutely. So it's not that I don't believe all those stories, but some of them you're like, hmm, mm-hmm. okay. 225. Big dog numbers. Nobody ran up to the bar with more confidence than anyone. <laughs> not not before or since has no. anyone ran up to 225 knowing that they were going to demolish it as much 235. as 235. Little dance beforehand, waits for that beat to kick in. Yeah. Let's go. 235. Not as confident, but still knowing he's going to make it. <laughs> the precision is something else. Yeah. You've it's funny, you know. Uh, Nothing funny about this there. He's 242. You see there's loads of pictures and his back foot is almost flat on the ground. Mm-hmm. It's kind of collapsed in. But on none of these lighter attempts that happened. And I've seen a lot of people talking about that of being like, oh, if it's heavy enough, you can just let it collapse. But he doesn't let it collapse on any of these. No, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, there oh we go. God. That's a, such a perfect split jerk position on 241. It doesn't make any sense, lads. Lads, what is going on? Holy. Yeah, do clap for that. That deserves a clap. 241. <sighs> Who's this old man? Who is, is that this? It? That's it. What a way to finish. Check out Seek of Strength on iOS and Android. Check out the Seek of Strength app if you want to run our weightlifting program. It is adaptive loading, coach bot, exercise video library. If you're a weightlifter and you're looking to improve your weightlifting with in-person coaching, if you wanted to get some obsession with us, people are always asking when we're doing seminars. We're doing a weightlifting camp in Portugal in May. Full details will be below, but we're going through double sessions per day. We'll be doing lectures. We've ran several camps now and people always love them and we'll be right there, hands-on for any level. Lots of people are wondering like, oh, am I too beginner to come? In fact, it is perfect for you if you're very new to lifting it doesn't matter because we'll be there for those sessions so adjusting so you'll have several sessions in a row with us where we can fix that set you up for some success and if you're already a reasonably well established lifter we can work on lots of finer points of your technique over those couple of days so the camps are really beneficial because we get lots of hands-on time with you so we can really give you that feedback and fix it in that kind of real time for you so check it out send us an email if you want to book a spot thanks for watching